Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Doug Waterer, formerly the vegetable crop specialist at the University of Saskatchewan, now working as an independent crop investigator. In this particular case, I'm working in association with the Saskatchewan Seed Potato Growers Association on a very interesting project, and that's to try to find better ways to deal with wireworms in potatoes. Wireworms is a very significant problem to a whole range of different cereal crops, but also in the vegetable area. Root crops like potatoes, carrots, etc., are seeing all kinds of damage from wireworms. The objective of this trial is to look at some new seed treatments for wireworms. Uh, there is only one seed treatment or two seed treatments that are presently registered for use in potatoes. The most popular one of those is Thymat. Uh, Thymat is rather an effective product, but it also is very difficult to apply. The growers have to use a very expensive custom application method, not convenient for small acreage growers to use, not convenient for people that are just getting into potatoes or only growing limited volumes to utilize. So the industry is very definitely interested in an alternative. Also, thymet is one of the most toxic agrochemicals there is out there. Growers are always looking for a safer product, safer for the environment, safer for themselves. So the objective of this project, as I said, was to look at two new introductions, chemicals with uh, look like they have potential to be used for wireworm control, particularly in situations with growers who are not presently using thymet. These products are applied in the planting furrow at the time of planting. Basically, you open up the seed furrow. As the seed furrow is being opened, there is a spray application of this product right into the bottom of the seeding furrow. The seed piece is dropped in on top of that. The seed furrow is covered up and uh, the product works from there. What happens in potatoes is that soon after the potatoes are planted, the wireworms are attracted to the potato seed piece and begin to feed on it. Now, potato seed piece is, is quite large. It takes a lot of wireworms to cause a significant amount of damage. So often you can see a fair bit of wireworm activity without seeing any significant impact on your stand of potatoes, etc. Where the major damage occurs is in the subsequent fall, where the wireworms uh, are in the soil. In the summertime, they migrate deeper into the soil profile to get away from the heat. But in fall, as the soil cools, the wireworms migrate back up towards the surface of the soil and begin to actively feed on the potatoes prior to harvest. And all it takes is a small amount of wireworm feeding on a potato tuber to render it unmarketable. So the losses can be quite significant in some years. So what we're looking for in this particular trial is to see whether these treatments are A, effective at protecting the seed piece from wireworm damage, but B, and probably economically more important, is to see whether these products are also going to provide some protection against wireworm damage in the fall. Asking a product to provide protection, if the product was applied in May, you're going to be digging in September, so we're looking at four to five months protection. That's asking a little bit too much of most products. Unless the product which you applied in May has actually killed the wireworms. And that was one of the major limitations with some of the other treatments that were available to control wireworms. They were designed to protect the seed piece, but they were not designed to kill the wireworms. They simply stunned or repelled the wireworms, so allowed the potatoes to come up just fine. But since they didn't control the wireworms, come fall, your wireworm problem is still there and you're going to see some significant losses. One of the products that we've included in this trial is kind of revolutionary in that it doesn't just stun the wireworms, it kills them. And so therefore what we're hoping to see from this product is not only is going to have protected the seed piece from damage at planting time, but since it killed the wireworms, we're also hoping that we're going to see a lot fewer graded out tubers come fall. This uh, project, it, the plan is to, well, we've actually already sampled the seed pieces soon after planting to look for wireworms on them and then what we're going to do is come back again in fall pick up the tubers and look for wireworm damage on the tubers themselves don't like to get overexcited by results from a trial but when we dug up the seed pieces in the spring we were very impressed 
by first of all the level of uh, wireworm protection we were seeing, so the seed feces weren't being significantly damaged by the wireworms. But the thing that's most important and the thing that has us most excited about one of these products at least is that the wireworms that we did see in the vicinity of the seed piece were all dead. And what that gives us is a strong hint that this product is not only going to protect the seed piece, but it's also potentially going to protect the entire crop. And that will, if that holds true, will represent a very significant step forward for the industry. So as I said, this is a one-year adopt funded uh, demonstration project of a product that is already registered. We're hoping to uh, get some good results from this and get that information out to the growers in a timely manner. Good morning, my name is Doug Waterer, formerly the Vegetable Crop Specialist at the University of Saskatchewan, now working as a private crop consultant, in this particular case doing some work in support of Saskatchewan vegetable industry. This is a project that is being co-funded by CSIDC, ICDC, and the Saskatchewan Vegetable Growers Association. Um, a project that was developed by Connie Timichuk and Kara Drury to look at a very significant problem we're seeing in the carrot industry in Saskatchewan, and that's wireworm damage to carrots. People that grow cereal crops are very familiar with the damage that wireworms can cause in the spring where the wireworms come up and start to feed on your seed, you get poor stand, etc. That's really not the problem that the, seed, the carrot growers are facing. They, they face a, a, a different thing. Wireworms don't particularly like carrot seed in the spring. What they love is carrots in the fall. So in the springtime, wireworms are up feeding close to the surface. They may ding a few seeds. That's a, a bit of an issue. They migrate down into the cooler soil for the duration of the summertime. But then come late August and through September, the wireworms migrate up into the surface layers of the soil where they begin to actively feed on the carrots themselves. And in horticulture, the focus is on how things look. And all it takes is just a minor bit of wireworm damage, just a small shot on the outside or a tiny tunnel through a carrot and the whole carrot becomes a, a discard. And it's not unusual for growers to lose 15 or 20 percent of their carrots to wireworms in a, in a tough year. At present, there are no chemicals that are registered for the control of wireworm in carrots. So you can appreciate the growers are in pretty tough and they're very interested in, in anything that might potentially be used. We're very excited to see that there are some new chemistries that are being registered for use for wireworm control in a range of crops. The latest products have approved, received approval for use in potatoes and corn, and we're very interested in seeing them whether there might be potential to expand that registration of those products for use in carrots. The products that we're looking at in this particular trial some of them just simply provide, uh, they stun the wireworms for a while. We don't think that they're gonna have an awful lot of efficacy. The, the product that we're very excited about is a product that actually kills the wireworms. And so the, in this particular trial, we opened up a planting row for the, for the carrots, sprayed the chemical into it, then planted the carrots into the sprayed soil. Uh, what we're hoping is that in the springtime, the wireworms will be attracted to the seed, attempt to feed on the seed, but then be killed by the chemical that was applied in the seed row. And the beauty of it is, is that since wireworms don't move that much, if you've managed to kill them off in the spring, very unlikely you're going to have a problem in that same area in the fall. So that's the type of protection we're looking for in this, in this particular trial. Um, I will emphasize to you, this is in the de primary developmental phase. It's almost a proof of concept, but we've seen some very positive results in some other adjacent trials, and we're hoping to see the same thing in carrots. So stay tuned for some results. Good morning, my name is Doug Lauderer. I'm formerly the vegetable crop specialist at the University of Saskatchewan, now doing custom research in support of the vegetable industry in Saskatchewan. The project I'm going to talk to you today is a project that's being funded through the CSIDC, ICDC, and with also additional support from the Saskatchewan Vegetable Growers Association. This is a project that was designed by Connie Timichuk and Kara Drury, and it's designed to look at anything that we can do 
to help vegetable growers deal with one of the most severe problems that they face with, and that's root maggots in their brassica crops. So by brassica crops, I'm thinking cauliflower, broccoli, radish, and in this particular case, we like to use rutabaga, because boy, do root maggots love rutabaga. So root maggots, if you're not familiar with them, uh, if you're a canola grower, you've seen them. They're a serious issue for canola, but much more damaging in veg crops. Uh, we have a very significant problem with root maggots in Saskatchewan in large effect because of the fact that almost half the arable land in the province is planted to canola. So there are lots and lots of root maggots around. In the springtime, what happens is very soon after the vegetable growers plant the seed or put out transplants of their vegetable crops, the root maggots, uh, the root maggot flies, comes in, flies into the field, smells the, the host plant, lays its eggs at the base of the host plant. Uh, within a matter of about five days, those eggs hatch, the root maggot then burrows down into the soil and starts feeding on the roots of the emerging seedling of cabbage cauliflower or canola. So, the key thing is that if you've got enough root maggot damage, it will actually kill the plant. A little bit less root maggot damage, what will happen is it will damage a lot of the roots of the plant and the plant will be weak, very prone to nutrient deficiencies, to water stress, or even to being simply blown right out of the soil by a high wind. Uh, you'll see the root maggot damaged plants will wilt on a a very very hot day or they'll show signs of nutrient deficiency even though you're certain you've applied enough nutrient to the film field so those are all signs that you've got a root maggot issue so what do the growers do about root maggots well in some cases they basically quit because it's such a difficult problem to deal with but what we're trying to do in this particular project is to try to come up with some solutions there are some products that can be applied in this to the seed piece or in the seed planting row that will give you at least some short-term control of those first generation root maggots but unfortunately what tends to happen is is that that, that control wears out very very quickly and so what we're looking for in this particular project is to see it, the duration of protection that these chemicals will provide for the seedlings but also to see um, whether it is going to be possible to harvest a marketable crop from the, these treatments if we just simply rely on the treatments that are applied at seeding time or are we going to have to come in midway into the growing season and apply additional pesticides. So this trial, as I said, is, is designed to test a number of different chemicals at a number of different rates to see whether if we step up the rate can we get longer control of the root maggots or are, as I said, are we going to have to come in there with secondary pesticides. Root maggots are really problematic because there, unfortunately, is at least two generations of them in the field. And so even though we might be able to protect the seedlings for an extended period of time, we're still going to have to deal with them later on in the season. This video was shot in late July and we're starting to see a secondary invasion of root maggots and uh, the root systems are actually being significant damaged by the root maggots. So it's going to be a challenge, but if we can put another tool in the grower's back pocket, that's always a step in the right direction. So this project is uh, at least a one-year demonstration. If it looks promising, if it looks like some of the, uh, the chemicals have some potential to provide some protection, you'll see this project going forward.